contacts in. And 30 seconds, people. Hi, I'm... No? Great. I've got a live one! Okay, guys, let's get ready. 10 seconds. Add Bunyan. Test vibration. Six. Five. Okay, fade to black. Three. Vader is still Luke's father. Hey there, I'm Cookie, and like a shark, I have to keep moving or I'll die. Also, I like chum. Couldn't find a partner? Gee, it's kind of like a metaphor. Do you know what that means? And today's wrong answer of the game is being brought to you by... Mysterious Boxes Incorporated. Pacta sunt servanda, pulvis adumbra sumus. Okay then, why wait any longer? First, I could eat a whole mother goose. I'm doing a lot of statistical breakdowns of nursery rhymes and organizing them by category. First, I put Hickory Dickory Dock and other rhymes about clocks on this timeline. Now, which nursery rhyme info would not fit in my pie chart? You know, my chart featuring nursery rhymes with pies in them. Little Jack Horner's plum to thumb ratio, Old King Cole's distinct types of merriment, girls Georgie Porgy kissed, or varieties of bird deaths in Sing a Song of Sixpence. Watch your clock! Old King Cole smokes his pipe and listens to Fiddler's Three, but there's no mention of pie anywhere in his rhyme. Also, I'm working on this bar graph, which includes all nursery rhymes that feature people drinking in bars. And on its way, pimp my carriage. Hey, ever watch MTV's Spring Break coverage? I keep it TiVo'd and watch it every Tuesday. This week I'm watching Spring Break 2010 where they wrap a guy and a girl up in a fantasy burrito. Anyway, if MTV did a show about Amish people called MTV's Room Springa Break, what would you hear in an episode? Yahoo! This is the week we choose a mate! The girls go wild with this butter churning marathon! Woo! We have freedom to visit the outside world! Or, we're in mourning! Get your soul stealing! cameras off us not much time left room springa is an amish tradition where teens get to experience the outside world before deciding to choose the amish lifestyle as an adult and once they realize the outside world is made up of mtv shows like pranked the hills and 16 and pregnant they gladly return to the amish lifestyle Up next, Heather has two motherlands. It's the put the choices into order and buzz in and see if you are right. Okay, this one's super easy if you ask me, but I'm contractually obligated to throw in an extra thousand bucks for a correct answer. Here we go. Place these Russian dolls in order from oldest to youngest. Anna Kornikova, Anton Chekhov, Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev, Chekhov, Kornikova, Gorbachev, Kornikova, Chekhov, Chekhov, Gorbachev, Kornikova, or Chekhov, Kornikova, Gorbachev. In Russia, question gets you wrong. Ready for this? Anton Chekhov, the playwright, was born in 1860, Mikhail Gorbachev, the politician, in 1931, and Anna Kornikova, the tennis player, in 1981. This also just so happens to be the order from least attractive to most attractive. This one's known as Pain in the Slash. Because he's been killing the longest, which of these serial killers is closest to being able to retire and collect his serial killer pension? Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, or Chucky? The iconic movie slasher starred in his first Halloween movie in 1978, earlier than any of these other characters. The serial killer pension is a pretty good one. $3,500 a month plus access to an anger management counselor, whom you may choose to murder. Where's the vibe, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, yeah. Buck her up for 
Think dog, it's Friday. And stop panting, it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven names. For each one, I want you to tell me if it's a breed of dog, a famous religious figure, or both. If it's a dog, press the square button. If it's a religious figure, press your circle button. And if you think it's both, press the X button. Each right answer blesses you with 300 bucks. But get one wrong and you're 300 bucks deeper in the doghouse. And you've got 30 seconds to finish. We good? Here we go. Sharpay. Lao Tzu. St. Bernard. Vizsla. Zoroaster. Uvier de Flandre. Show eats Quintly. No! Bad dog! Growing up, I had a dog that could walk on water. Well, actually, he just peed on the kitchen floor and then happened to stroll through it. That's the end of a thrilling first round. Let's hope you do a hell of a lot better the rest of the way. Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. And don't forget, the wrong answer of the game is still there for the taking. Well, no time like the present. And now, don't joke about that. You know, the more time passes, the more it's acceptable to make jokes about disasters. For instance, it's totally fine to make jokes about the bubonic plague. <laughs> bubonic plague. But it's not really funny to make fun of, say, the Iraq War. <clears throat> With that in mind, considering the timing of some of the world's most famous disasters, which of these tasteless jokes most merits a too soon response? Knock knock, who's there? The Chicago Fire! Take my Lindbergh baby, please! The Titanic walks in and the bartender says, you're sunk! Or, why did the Hindenburg crash into the road? Oh, have a little taste. It was begging to be picked. The Hindenburg disaster occurred in 1937 more recently than any of the other disasters, thus really prompting the phrase, too soon. And you'll be saying, oh, the humanity at the Zany Hut next Friday, where I'll be doing jokes like these that will be sure to offend you on multiple levels. Question seven. How about, I like big halibuts. If a subway footlong costs $5 and they come out with a new halibut sub that's as long as the USS Halibut Submarine, which is 350 feet, then how much would you expect to pay for one? $1,750, $1,890, $2,001, or $3,500? Know what Subway sandwich this choice reminds me of? The meatball marinara wrong. <laughs> Next time, try this. 350 multiplied by 5 is 1,750. Hooray for math! And nothing goes better with halibut than some slightly undercooked Parmesan oregano bread. Lord and chicken's picking out a mate. Oh, guess I'll marry eight. Here's a good one. Partly cloudy with a chance of space battles. Sorry, just a second. I want to listen to this speculative fiction weather report. The weather today calls for a continued desert heat across the entire planet with a 0% chance of rainfall. Also, there's a giant sandworm warning until the foreseeable future. Hmm, what fictional planet was that weather report for? Off, Pandora, Arrakis, or Caprica? The correct answer is... Arrakis, the planet from the Dune books, movie, and miniseries, is a desert planet plagued by giant sandworms. I get all kind of weird stations with this satellite radio. Overall, trading in Wonderland was down today on the heels of the Cheshire Cat failing to obtain bailout money from the Queen of Hearts. 
Now that's the planet from Avatar that was named after the Greek myth of Pandora's box. And speaking of boxes that may or may not contain all of the world's evil, you've just won... A mysterious box from Mysterious Boxes Incorporated. It's a box. Do whatever you want with it. But be warned, if you open it, there is an outside chance it may mean the end of the world as we know it. This wrong answer of the game has earned you a sweet 8,000 clams. Well done. Here we have Twung Tisters. And speaking of tongue twisters, which tongue twister would anger a copy editor? Betty Botter bought a little bit of butter? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? Unique New York is very unique. Or mommy made me masticate my M&Ms. Morons make multiple mistakes. I so wanted you to pick this one. Unique means that something is one of a kind. Therefore, it's either unique or it's not, but nothing can be very unique. Although, to be fair, any tongue twister would upset a copy editor as they are devoid of any mirth or whimsy. Hold me, never let me go. May I introduce... Four! Your refreshment. Where would you find the rapper slash actor you would have to mix with lemonade to make the drink named after golf legend Arnold Palmer? The set of NCIS Los Angeles, the set of Law & Order SVU, the set of Barber Shop, or the set of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2? And Arnold Palmer is a drink made of half lemonade and half iced tea. And rapper slash actor Ice T plays a detective on Law and Order SVU. <laughs> My rap name would probably be Ice Age, because after I dropped a rhyme, it'd probably be deathly quiet for thousands of years. <laughs> Welcome to the attack. When you see two clues that match, press the X button. $4,000 for a right answer. 4000 gone if you're wrong. And one more thing. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. What do you teach? I hope you had a well-rounded education. Good luck. Now, I'm in no way certified as a psychologist, but I have watched a lot of primetime drama shows, so listen up. I think you are afraid of success, because if you do well, then you'll get attention, which is something you wouldn't know how to handle since your mother left you at an early age. So, you play it safe by hiding in the comforting shadows of mediocrity, hoping to coast this way all through your uneventful existence. Or you just had an off game. You don't know! 
That'll do it, folks. What's going on, Donnie? All right, give me the hate sign if you're interested in more playage. This week on Racist Doctor. Doctor, we're losing him. We've tried everything. Isn't it obvious? This has lupus. But will this be Racist Doctor's last patient? We're gonna have to fire him. Why? He's a terrible racist. But he's an amazing doctor. Don't miss the season finale of Racist Doctor. Give it to me straight, Doc. Am I gonna live? I promise you I'll do everything in my power to save you so you can keep living your miserable life. Uh, thanks? And nothing can prepare you for the shocking final moments. You suffered a pretty severe blow to the head after that last surgery. I think I may be losing my ability to be racist. Racist Doctor. Extremely secretive and expensive government research suggests that cats like gum. More on that tonight. Tag, I am Pope Benedict XVI. When I enter a church, I always reach for the basin of holy water as a gesture of symbolic cleansing. But when I enter a gymnasium to either get my elliptical on or just a wail on my rock-hard abs, I reach for a bottle of vitamin holy water. <laughs> vitamin holy water replenishes my electrolytes while giving me godlike strength for higher reps and an even higher calling. It's sacred, refreshing, and loaded with vitamin G. One ticket to bloody, bloody murder, please. Wait a minute. How old are you? Seventeen. I don't believe you. You look six. Aw, man, shucks. Hey, kid, if you want to seem older and get into R-rated movies, you gotta smell older. Here, try a bottle of Old Man Essence. Hey, me! One ticket to bloody, bloody murder, please. You have the mature smell of mothballs and elderly B.O. Sorry about before. Thanks! And thanks, old man! Remember, kids, buy old man essence so you too can smell old enough to live! Are you in the market for a new used van? When you think Vans, think Vans Fan Vans Van Lot. Hello, I'm Vans, Van Van, and I sell the sweetest vans in the city. They've got 8-track players, water beds, airbrush murals, beaded curtains. Hey Vans, what's that weird burning smell? Never you mind that, kid. You'll understand when you're older. Hey, okay, my vans don't come with satellite radio and GPS and la-di-da, but they do have character, character. and carpeted walls. So, when you think Vans, think Vans Van Vans Van Lot. Conveniently located down by the old abandoned airport that's probably haunted. You know the one. And remember, if Vans Van Vans Van Lots are rocking, be sure to stop in and buy a van from me, Vans Van Van. Bowling. Why ruin such a primal sport by gingerly putting your fingers through the ball like a dainty little schoolgirl? Introducing Fistable Bowling Equipment. For the dude who takes on the world knuckles first, we customize all of our balls, bags, and shoes so they fit your fist perfectly, and you can get right down to the business of punching out a game. Wow, nice frame, mister. Out of my way. Fistable Bowling Equipment Incorporated. When life gives you a 7-10 split, punch it hard. 